Welcome back to the final new content video of Unit 1. As you can see today, we're going to look at compression. So a quick overview. Well, first we're going to look at the advantages and disadvantages of compression. Uh, right then, we're going to look at, I guess, kind of the two, uh, may, may, yeah, maybe the two umbrella terms, right, of the different compression uh, or algorithms or techniques. Right, that's going to be lossy and lossless compression. Uh, right then, we're going to look at what well, specific techniques or specific algorithms for what well, image, audio, video, and also text. Right, compression. Uh, okay, one of them is going to be run length encoding, and another is going to be Huffman coding. So first, then, well, just a definition. I mean, compression. Um, yeah. Okay, okay. So well, basically, that just means you know reducing the size of the data, right? Making the data smaller. So we've mentioned these different file types: well, text, image, sound, video. And ideally, we want to be able to compress all of these formats. And I think for videos, well, of course, it's obvious why we want, uh, why we want to compress, because we said, well, if it was uncompressed, you know, what just like a one second, you know, 60 FPS video, um, yeah, by what 1920 by 1080 pixels, uh, that was going to be what like 450 megabytes, well, yeah, but I mean, maybe 490 megabytes. You know, I can't remember exactly. Uh, so of course, yeah, that's just going to be huge. But even for text, right? So yeah, I, I guess like if you want a specific example, well, web pages. Um, and I mean, well, web pages, well, they're just HTML, JavaScript, CSS, right? I mean, yeah, all of that is just text. Then if we can have the file size, then, I mean, well, if you think, you know, that means the website is going to load twice as fast. Uh, the website owner is going to pay half as much for bandwidth. Um, you know, also just the general internet is going to be less clogged up. Um, when I, I mean, yeah, when I say the internet, well, I'm talking about uh, what the, uh, I, I, I guess, yeah, kind of the infrastructure, right? So the fiber optic cables, uh, the routers, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, the Ethernet cables, right? Yeah, just, yeah, all the infrastructure. Um, right, so can you then think of some benefits of compression? And I guess the last slide, we did mention some. So, yeah, pause the video, and I, I think try to think of four. So, I get, I guess, well, one of the obvious ones, right, it's going to be faster transmission, uh, uploads, downloads, copying, etc. Um, I suppose, yeah, probably the most obvious benefit is going to be this, right, save space on secondary storage. So, well, hard drives, SSDs, uh, I, I guess even, you know, peripheral storage. Um, things like USBs. Uh, right, also we can send a file as well, an email or file attachment if it's otherwise too big. Because a lot of times, like, yeah, I, I guess what well, a lot of email clients, what well, they have like a 25, uh, okay, well, let's say 25 megabytes. Um, or to be honest, yeah, maybe it's megabytes, but yeah, maybe they just say megabytes. Um, yeah, well, I, I mean, basically, you know, they just have a file size limitation. So obviously, if, if we're compressing, well, maybe we can get it under that file size and, you know, hence be able to send it. Um, all right, and then finally, well, it's just going to use less bandwidth. So if you have, for example, a monthly phone contract with, uh, yeah, I mean, let's say 20 gigabytes per month, then, of course, ideally, you uh, yeah, I guess, um, well, of course, you don't want to be, like, watching huge videos on YouTube, right? If you can compress them to, uh, let's say, what, like, one two hundredth of the size, right? Then, of course, yeah, you're, you're going to be able to use, you know, uh, I, 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 well, I, okay, I guess you're going to be able to sort of, you know, use your internet more, um, yeah, without exceeding the kind of, uh, yeah, I, I guess, well, okay, let's say without exceeding the bandwidth limit, you know, as soon. So let's think then, well, why can't we just compress everything, right, e.g., you know, why don't you just uh, compress your entire hard drive? And really, I mean, I can only think of one reason for that, and, well, the main reason, I mean, it's just going to take time to decompress. So let's say if you just want to click on your, you know, Windows search, and then, yeah, you want to search for a specific file. Well, if everything was compressed, and, well, I, I suppose, yeah, if you're actually searching the file contents, well, then, of course, you know, it's, it's got to actually decompress in order to read those file contents. Um, so, yeah, I think that's really just the main disadvantage. Right, so then, well, there's two categories, a compression algorithm or, I guess, what well, technique, right, approach can fall into. Uh, the first is going to be lossy, and well, as the name suggests, I mean here, well, data is just going to be lost, right? This means the quality is reduced, and you know, hence can't be recovered, um, yeah, when we decompress it, right? In contrast, well, lossless again, I mean, probably just you know from the name you can guess uh, when in this case, right, data isn't lost, right? Therefore, quality stays the same, and the original can be reconstructed perfectly. Uh, however, the sort of slight disadvantage is why well, it's going to be that you know the uh, I, I I well again, I guess we say the file size can't be reduced as much. Um, yeah, or the data can't be compressed as much. So if we look at the first type, and this is going to be for images, then, I mean, if you just look at this image, I mean, can, well, yeah, can you think of any way we can reduce this image? Um, or, well, yeah, I, I guess, you know, reduce the file size uh, without reducing the quality. And, like, if you actually zoom in on this, I mean, I'm not sure what the exact pixel value is going to be, but let's just say, I don't know, maybe, maybe there's, like, zero red, let's say 255 blue, 
uh, and yeah, like possibly a little bit of green, I don't know, maybe 50. Um, so of course, you know what, this is going to be pixel one, right? But then if we think, well, pixel two is just going to be identical in this case, um, because what if, if, yeah, if we see here, you know, all of these blues are the same. So with that in mind, I mean, hopefully, yeah, hopefully there's probably a way you can figure out how to do it. Um, and since we have a lot of repeated consecutive colors, then rather than storing the color for each pixel, we can actually store the number of repeated pixels of that color, right? Then the color itself. Um, and I suppose like probably when you say repeated, you probably also want to say consecutive. I right? see, so, yeah, well, the kind of consecutive repeated pixels, um, yeah, or I guess what well, repeated consecutive pixels. Um, right, so to see the specific format, well, first we're going to store what the number of consecutive cells with the same color, right? Then we're going to store what the actual color value itself, or yeah, the pixel values. So for example, well, this image may start something like this, right? We have what, a thousand blue. Um, because I guess what well, if we look here, you know, kind of row one, well, row one, that's all blue. Uh, to be honest, you know, row two is all blue, right? Row three is all blue. Uh, eventually, we're going to hit this cloud. And yeah, I, I guess, you know, this cloud's going to have what, uh, just this kind of black stroke, right? The black outline. So, right, then maybe we have, for example, two black, right? Maybe we have 10 white for that little bit of cloud. Uh, I think, right, maybe then we have, you know, another two black, right, for the kind of outside of the stroke. Uh, and then, yeah, maybe here we have, what, 20 blue, which is going to be, uh, yeah, just this, you know, this little gap here. Um, and, well, yeah, of course, just etc. So hopefully you can see how, of course, well, this is going to compress the image. Um, and, yeah, if we say, well, the color values are, of course, going to be in binary, right? I mean, what, and, and, yeah, I guess, you know, of course, right, this is also going to be in binary, right, the, the count. Um, so here's just a screenshot from the book. I mean, well, basically it just shows the same thing, right, but in binary. Uh, so if we look at this image, well, first they're saying what we've got two. Um, so you write two is going to be the count and then what the color value, well, zero, 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 right? That's just going to be black uh, because, of course, what this is going to be red. Uh, this one's going to be green. This one's going to be blue. All right. Then if we look what then we've got four and I suppose, well, this is going to be green. What zero red, right? Two, five, five, green. Um, and of course, well, yeah, I mean, that's going to be these pixels here. Um, and, then, and then, well, yeah, I, I guess, of course, you know, you can look at the whole thing if you want. But yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Um, right, so it says the original image, uh, which is, hang on, uh, yeah, here we go, right, it's an 8 by 8 square, right, 64 pixels, uh, right, this would need 3 bytes per square, um, right, to include all 3 RGB values, uh, so, I mean, okay, this is then what we use in a 24-bit color, effectively, right, therefore, the uncompressed file is going to be 192 bytes, now, if we look at this, right, the run length encoding version has 92 values, right, therefore, while well, the compressed file is, you know, hence 92 bytes, um, and right, that's going to give it a new, uh, well, I, I guess, right, a file reduction of 52%. Um, right, and then here they actually say, well, the compression ratio is actually not as good as this because we also have to store other data, right, like the file header. Um, but yeah, I, th I think that's, you know, maybe not relevant, right, just for this example. Right, so if we specifically look at black and white color images or, well, okay, yeah, sorry, black and white versus color images, uh, then do you remember how many bits we needed per pixel to store in black and white image? So here, of course, while well, you want to think, well, I mean, we've just got two colors, right? Hence, to store well, two colors, right, we only need one bit, because, uh, of course, what well, we can represent either zero or one. Um, so, yeah, you could say, well, for example, black is zero, white is one. Right, and then for color, I guess usually we're going to use, what, 8, 16, 24, or maybe even 32 bits per pixel. And to be honest, if we're using 32 bits, right, this is usually where we're also going to have the alpha. Um, so alpha just means what the opacity, right? So whether it's see-through, whether it's not see-through. Um, yes, yeah, so of the transparency, right, opacity. So let's, right, okay, so I guess here then, well, here, right, here's four images. And we just want to think which of these images, right, will run length encoding work well. So let's try to order these images, right, in terms of file size, uh, right, from smallest to biggest and why. So, I mean, I'm kind of effectively, uh, I, I, yeah, I guess kind of saying, well, which one can run length encoding work the best on? Right, so if you had to think about that, well, hopefully it should be obvious that, well, that, yeah, I mean, well, of course, you know, these black and white ones are going to be the best. Um, and that seems like we said, well, for black and white, we only actually need, you know, uh, well, two bits. Um, yeah, to be honest, I, I feel like probably it'd be actually easier. Well, I, I guess probably it's possible to actually compress it more than this. Um, yeah, if, if I like went into the settings and, you know, tried to sort of, yeah, I, I guess compress it more. Um, right, anyway, so, okay, so, um, all right, so we say the reason it's good, well, one is because we have horizontal repeats, and the reason the horizontal repeats are good, because if we remember run length encoding, well, it's, 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 it's kind of going to count the consecutive colors, right, going horizontally. Um, now, if in contrast, we have, like, vertical repeats, and, uh, okay, well, I don't know, right, so let's just say, for example, I know, right, this is, a, say, like, all red pixels, 
and I don't know, may maybe these are, uh, or let's say orange pixels. Now, in that case, what I mean, if we only have you know one red, right, then one orange, like we actually can't use run length encoding in that case. Um, whereas if, for example, here, I don't know, maybe we have what, like four red, and then for example, four orange. Well, since these are kind of uh, horizontally consecutive, right, yeah, then we can use run length encoding. Um, but if, if we look here, of course, while well, pixel one is red, right, pixel two is orange, uh, what well, pixel three is red, you know, pixel four is orange. Um, yeah, we actually don't get any consecutive pixels that are the same color. Uh, right, of course, yeah, that's why horizontal repeats are going to be better. Um, right, of course, black and white again, well, we only need, you know, two bits, right, therefore it's good. Right, if we look at the next one, actually, so this next black and white is actually the second best. Uh, so, of course, our black and white is good. Um, but, yeah, since we mentioned our well, vertical repeats, right, it's not going to be as good for run length encoding. Um, like, of course, if you look at it, I mean, we do have a little bit of white here. Uh, of course, yeah, a little bit of black. So, I guess this can be compressed a little bit with run length encoding. Um, yeah, although, of course, not as good as the horizontal one. Right, then, hopefully it should be obvious, well, that, right, of course, this one's going to be three. Um, again, horizontal repeats is good. But, right, since we're using color, it's bad. And again, to be honest, like, I think if I was using a color table to represent this, uh, I could probably specify that what well, in this image, what well, we just have two colors, what well, red and green. Um, so I, I think again, like if, if I went into the settings, it's probably yeah probably possible to actually compress it more than this. Right then, well of course, if we look at the worst one and what this is, uh, maybe I mean like almost yeah almost twenty times bigger right compared to this black and white image. Um, and of course, well one race right, because well we're using color. Right, and there's also low opportunity for run length encoding because if we look, I mean, kind of like every consecutive pixel is a different color. Um, even if they look similar, all right, they're actually going to have slightly different values, right, in most cases. So, yeah, this kind of brings us on to the next point. Well, all right, do you think run length encoding will work well for photos? And if you actually think about this, all right, well, no. And that's going to be because, well, uh, very few consecutive pixels will, you know, will have like identical colors. Because if we have something like this, right, and of course, well, F, right, uh, yeah, six F, right, that's just going to be white. Well, you might have, for example, one pixel, which is, you know, this, right, but then let's say the next pixel, which is this. Now, to the human eye, I mean, what, um, yeah, I, 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 okay, so I guess to the human eye, you know, they're going to look identical. But, right, from the computer's point of view, right, of course, well, yeah, they're actually not identical, right, therefore it can't use run length encoding on this. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Um, all right, so with, yeah, I guess with all that said, then, well, do you think run length encoding is going to be a lossy or lossless compression technique? So, and of course, well, again, lossy. Uh, well, lossy means right. Uh, what? Um, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Right. So, lossy means well, we do lose some of the data, whereas of course, lossless, well, we don't lose the data. Right. We can reconstruct it perfectly. So, I think a lot of people might get this wrong. Right. Um, yeah. I, I guess you know a lot of people might think it's lossy. But it's actually lossless because if you think about it, well, if we have the run length encoding sequence, you know, five red, ten orange, three blue, then of course, you know, we can actually use that to reconstruct the original image perfectly. Um, all right, so then in terms of actually, well, lossy compression, I mean, basically, you just want to think about the formula for calculating an image's file size. So hopefully, we remember that. Well, it's going to be the resolution times the color depth. Um, and of course, remember the color depth, we can also call the bit depth. So if you think, I mean, this is kind of similar to physics as well. Where, like, if you want to, I don't know, you know, reduce the energy or, I don't know, yeah, like, reduce the momentum or whatever, um, you know, you can, of course, we'll just think, right, if we're multiplying these together, then, of course, well, we can reduce either of these, right, and, that, and that's going to reduce the overall file size. So, yeah, of, of course, like, if we reduce the resolution, so, of course, while well, the resolution, I mean, basically what that just means kind of making the image smaller. Um, yeah, obviously, well, um, I, I suppose, you know, um, okay, okay, right, let's just say using less pixels, right, making it smaller. Uh, then obviously the color depth, well that's just using what less, uh, okay, using less bits per pixel, um, which of course gives us an overall, you know, uh, okay, or sorry, that gives us an overall lower number of colors, right, in the entire image. Um, right, so if we look at audio, well, lossless audio compression, I mean, well, one is going to be Hoffman coding, and we'll actually look at that later, since, you know, predominantly this is for text. Um, yeah, so even though Hoffman coding is predominantly for text, I mean, this can also be used for other formats too. Since if you think about it, I mean, what well, every file is just zeros and ones, right? I mean, from the computer's perspective, there's a, there's a kind of no difference uh, between like an audio file and a text file. Um, yeah, of course, both of them are just, you know, binary. Um, all right, so then if we look at audio compression, um, well, yeah, lossy audio compression. Uh, one thing we can do, well, we can just remove frequencies and low amplitudes, right? That, um, yeah, okay, that are inaudible. So, of course, well, inaudible just means what we can't hear them. 
uh, right, so if they're inaudible to the human ear. So that's going to be well quiet sounds and also well very low or very, uh, okay, sorry, very high or very low frequencies. So hopefully people remember what that the human hearing range is what generally what 20 hertz, uh, right, to 20,000 hertz. So we can think, well, anything less than 20 hertz, of course, we can just delete, right, anything more than 20,000 hertz. Uh, yeah, of course, we can also remove. Uh, right, another approach is, well, we can start with an average amplitude, then we can store the difference rather than the actual value. So, for example, right, assume we start at 50 decibels, uh, right, if, like, rather than storing 50.1 and 49.9, we could actually represent them as what I'd be in, well, you know, plus 0.1, right, and minus 0.1, respectively. And this is going to use fewer bits. So what we're saying is, well, like kind of, <clears throat> okay, right, let's say rather than storing the absolute values, and of course, while well, the absolute values were 50.1, right, 49.9, um, we can actually just store the relative offset, right, from the average value. Um, and yeah, of course, hopefully that makes sense that, well, since, you know, 0 0.1 is smaller, right, therefore that's, uh, well, yeah, of course, you know, we're going to, uh, we're going to need to store. Um, okay, okay, right, we're going to need fewer bytes to store that, or yeah, fewer bits to store that, right, compared with, you know, if we're storing these bigger numbers. Um, all right, and ag again, well, another approach, you know, just a simple approach, uh, we just want to think about the formula for calculating the file size of an audio file. Um, and then, well, of, of course, yeah, again, we can just reduce any of these. So if you remember this, what is going to be the sampling rate? So, of course, what well, this is how many samples we take per second. Uh, right, we're going to multiply by the sampling resolution, and of course, what the sampling resolution uh, that was going to be the number of bits for each sample. Uh, right, the number of channels. So that was basically the number of kind of distinct audio. Uh, yeah, I, I guess okay, kind of like the number of distinct audio recordings. Right, that make up the entire audio file. Uh, so an obvious example, if we're using stereo, well, we're just going to have you know a left and a right. Uh, yeah, okay, we're going to have a left and a right channel. Um, if you remember, we can also have uh, sort of what surround sound or yeah, multi-channel, which and of course, well, I don't know, yeah, that can use like four, six, or right, eight. Um, yeah, but of course, you know, various number of channels. Uh, right then, well, then of course, the duration as well. Although, yeah, like um, well, I think I think you know, duration we'll say in a minute. All right now, in exam questions, the number of channels will usually be one. So actually, like, it's probably not going to be possible to reduce this. Um, yeah, that, that's why, you know, in the exam, I think just uh, just say reduce those two. Um, right, so, of, of course, uh, yeah, okay, so for example, right, if we have the sampling rate, right, therefore that's going to have the file size, right, like what's yeah, have, uh, right, having the resolution. Um, and again, you know, this is also called the bit depth. Um, yeah, of course, we're having that is also going to have the file size. Uh, okay, all right, so I, I think, yeah, I think there should have been something mentioned about the duration. Um, so if, if we think about the duration now, probably we don't want to reduce the duration of an audio file because what well, otherwise you're going to have to speed up the audio file. Um, yeah, or you're just going to be, you know, cutting off some of the, well, yeah, you know, cutting off some of the audio at the end. Um, and probably, yeah, neither of those, you know, scenarios is probably desirable, right, in most cases. Right, then if we look at videos, so if you remember, videos are actually not on the syllabus, but I mean, yeah, this we can just look at quickly, right? I think it kind of makes logical sense. Uh, so if you think, well, videos are actually just combinations of images or audio, right? Therefore, we can just use uh, well, any lossless image technique, right? Uh, yeah, also, you know, lossless audio technique. Um, so for example, a run length encoding and also Huffman coding. Right, if we want kind of an extra thing, well, sometimes the frame doesn't change, right? E.g. if we have a well, white text on a black background playing for 10 seconds, um, you know, e even a video like this, right, just with the, uh, yes yeah, slide, you know, this slide, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, this slide might stay for like 30 seconds. Um, therefore, what we can do, like, we can kind of use like a run length encoding thing, but rather than storing, you know, pixel by pixel, uh, we're actually storing the entire frame. So it's kind of like saying, well, okay, right, let's say this is frame A, like, and then we have, uh, I don't know, maybe this plays for, you know, 100 frames. Um, and like, of course, I don't, I don't know, right, okay, let's say you've got like 20 FPS, right, therefore, of course, well, that's going to play for five seconds. Uh, yeah, if we have this frame for, you know, 100 and yeah, what a frame rate of 20 FPS. Um, yeah, so hopefully that makes sense. Right, and then we can also think, well, parts of a frame may only change slightly from well, frame one to frame two, right? Therefore, we can simply store the changes, okay, rather than the whole frame. And again, like if, if we look at this, you know, sort of for slide video as an example, now, like, if, uh, yeah, okay, you know, if here, right, if I'm moving the mouse, well, the only thing that's actually changing is going to be this part of the video. Right, everything else just stays the same. 
um, yeah, that's why, of course, right, we're, we're only going to store the changes. Um, and then, of course, well, this is why, right, so what a two-hour long, right, 4K, I guess, what Ultra HD movie, uh, right, like you might find on Netflix, would be, uh, what, 3,400 gig uh, gigabytes. So, what, that's also, what, 3.4 terabytes. Um, right, yet using lossless compression, right, it can be shrunk or reduced to about 50 gigabytes. Um, so, yeah, does it tell us how much that is? Yeah, I'm not sure, but, well, of course, you can do that calculation, right, find out, uh, yeah, the compression ratio. Uh, right, so we can actually compress this even further using lossy video compression, uh, but of course this will actually well, lose video quality. So again, you know, for lossy, well, lossy video compression, well, just think of the formula. So the formula, what well, is the resolution, right, multiplied by the bit depth, um, right, multiplied by the frame rate, all right, and then well, multiplied by the duration. Uh, so again, while well, reducing any of the first three, right, the file size will decrease. Um, and similar to audio, you know, I, 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 yeah, okay, so I guess we could make the video twice as fast uh, to half the file size. Um, but yeah, of course, in most cases, right, we, we don't want to actually change the video's duration. Um, all right, so I guess what well, the final type then is going to be text. Uh, right, so for images, videos, and sound, we can use either a lossy or lossless compression approach. But do you think this is also true for text? So if you had to think, well, no. And the reason for this, like, we wouldn't want to have, I don't know, let's say our input of hello. And if we, you know, compress it, right, it becomes, well, okay, yeah, sorry, right, if we compress it and then decompress it again, uh, right, if the final version comes out as hell, for example, um, since, of course, yeah, well, in this case, right, if you're losing characters, right, you're just going to lose meaning of the text. Um, I, I suppose, like, yeah, maybe there's going to be sort of, I don't know, you know, 0.001% of cases where that's okay. But, you know, for sort of normal communication, um, yeah, of, of course, you know, we're really just going to want lossless compression for text. Right, so the way we do this, um, and actually Huffman coding, right, this has actually been proven as being the most uh, kind of mathematically optimal, right, uh, coding, or yeah, okay, or let's say the mathematically optimal uh, compression technique, right, for text. Um, so what this is going to do, well, it's going to take advantage of the fact that some characters are more common than others. So I, I guess what if we see here in English, what we're saying, what E is the most common, uh, where, whereas, okay, here we go, right, here's the pen. Uh, yeah, of course, right, E is the most common, T is the least, uh, well, T is the second most common. Uh, and then what, yeah, Z, right, Z here is going to be the least common. So rather than transmitting data, right, as ASCII or Unicode, then we can actually use a shorter code for the most common characters, right, and longer codes for the, well, yeah, you know, less common characters. Um, and the thing that's actually quite surprising is what well, all known languages follow this kind of what one over x pattern. Um, yeah, if we're sort of looking at the, uh, yeah, sort of, you know, looking at the shape of the graph. Um, so even things, you know, I don't know, some like yeah, ancient hieroglyphics or, you know, like cave paintings. I mean, yeah, like everything ever discovered right, has always followed the same pattern. Um, there's, yeah, I, I guess like there's not been a language where you have uh, kind of like an equal, um, yeah, like an equal, uh, yeah okay right okay sorry so an equal frequency right, or an equal occurrence right of you know the different letters um right so if you just want to practice well i mean here is a good website you can use you know just to type in some text right encode it decode it right see how it works so for us well we'll just try hello world right one then we're going to create a frequency table of the number of occurrences of each character and this is going to be case sensitive so what we're saying is well of course uh, let's say big h is going to be different to small h uh, right, so if we do that, well, here, uh, okay, okay, actually, right, okay, that's right. So, yeah, actually, this is not the frequency table. Um, if we were actually to do the frequency table, well, of course, well, we're going to say big, uh, and, well, let's do it here. Well, so big H is just going to be 1. Uh, if we look at E, well, okay, right, E is also going to be 1. Uh, right, but then if we look at small L, all right, well, of course, right, small L is going to be 3. Um, so, yeah, I mean, hopefully that makes sense what we're doing, right? We're just counting the number of occurrences of each character. Right, then we're going to assign uh, Huffman codes to letters with the most common characters, ha uh, okay, right, with the most common well, letters or characters, right, having the shortest Huffman codes. So if we see here, well, right, uh, okay, right, okay, okay, so since we said L is the most common, what, I mean, three occurrences, right, therefore we give this the shortest Huffman code. I guess what the second most common is going to be O. Uh, yeah, because if we look at this, what, we've got two O's. Right, therefore, of course, well, that gets the second shortest Huffman code. Um, and then, for example, if we look at what, well, you know, H, E, uh, yeah, probably D, you know, right, etc. Um, yeah, all of these only occur one time, right? Therefore, they get the longer code. Right, then we just want to kind of, well, go through, you know, left to right, right, uh, kind of replacing each letter or each character with the corresponding code. So, of course, right, if we see H, uh, well, H is going to be, uh, what, this. So, uh, 
Yeah, well, okay, okay, let's do it here. Um, so what H is just going to be what? Uh, yeah, what well, three ones then zero right then. Of course we go to the E, and if we look, okay, well E is just going to be four ones, um, and yeah, of course you know etc. Right, do it for all the characters. Um, all right, and well, okay, right. So here I actually show you anyway, um, and, and again, all right, of course, yeah. Here you can see right the different characters right in different colors. Right, so the clever thing about this is that the generated Huffman codes are chosen so that the okay, so that there's only one possible decoding. Um, right, otherwise you get a situation like this. So suppose the following codes were you, uh, were chosen, then what would zero one zero one decode to? And you know, just pause the video, have a think about this. Now, hopefully you can see that while well, here there's actually going to be multiple decodings. Uh, right, of course, yeah, we could have what well, A B A B, uh, since what well, yeah A is zero, B is one. Uh, you know, equivalent what well, it could be yes yeah, C C because oh uh, well, yeah C C is just zero one. Uh, yeah, likewise of course you know this one or this one. Um, so again, right, this is why it's, uh, I, yeah, okay, so right, of course, right, this is why it's important that even if you have like millions of characters, right, millions of bits, right, there still has to be only one possible decoding. Um, yeah, of course, right, other, uh, well, otherwise it's just not going to work. Right, so if we're talking the other way, right, decoding, then, right, let's assume this is our binary input. Then what we want to do, so we want to start on the left and we want to find the character that each sequence corresponds to. So let's just start here then, or on this zero. So if we think, well, I mean, yeah, okay, right, and then, of course, if we look at our table here, we want to think, well, what starts with zero, right, so I guess, well, yeah, this L, right, also this O, uh, right, also the space, right, and, yeah, the X, um, right, so then we want to think, well, I mean, yeah, what's going to have a one next, because, because of, of course, right, I mean, there, well, there's no character that's just a zero, uh, so then we think, well, zero, one, okay, well, that's still the L, but I, I guess, yeah, okay, right, well, that's not going to be this O, uh, right, it's also not going to be, uh, yeah, okay, okay, right, uh, right here. So it's also not going to be this space, right? Then of course we go to the third character. Well, uh, was zero one one. Then if we look at that, well, zero one one is just this L. So since we found a match, right? Of course, well then uh, here we're just going to write L. Then let's just try one more. So the next one, what well, is going to start with zero? Okay, yeah. Look at all those. It can be uh, again, right? There's nothing. That's just zero. Uh, right. Well then zero zero. So what well, zero zero? Well, either this could be a space, right? Or it could be this O. Uh, right. Then if we look at the next character, well zero. Um, so of course, well, right here we get three zeros, right? That's going to be O. Now, I, I think, I mean, well, these next ones, if you want to have a go, right, pause the video. Uh, yeah, try and do this, right? See if you can get the correct answer. So I, I suppose, well, step two, yeah, well, I, I think, you know, we've done this already, right? Of course, of course well, it's just saying, you know, go left to right, go to the next bit, uh, then just, yeah, repeat the process. Right, then if you've done that, then, well, the original string, right, it should just be lossless text. And I actually wanted to write, you know, lossless compression. But to be honest, lossless compression, you know, it was going to be so many bits. Um, yeah, okay, so again, right, hopefully you've managed to get that, right, if you had a go at that. Right, so let's think then about the different uses. Uh, you know, sometimes this can be used, right, sometimes it can't be used. Um, so do you think Hoffman coding is useful for short strings, right, e.g. someone's name? So if you've had to think, well, right, I mean, yeah, this is going to be no. And the reason for that is, well, of course, right, not only do we actually have to send the actual Hoffman code, um, you know, we also have to send right this frequency table, right? Or, yeah, I guess you can also call it a dictionary. Um, and, and of course, well, that yeah, that's going to be the table. Uh, what that's of course, well, yeah, mapping the character right to the Huffman code. Um, yeah, no, I, I think here right, I said frequency table. Right? Okay, sorry, this is not the frequency table. Uh, this is well the Huffman code, uh, I guess table. Um, and in that case, like, well, actually, the table you would be sending would actually be bigger than the actual data. Um, or even if the table itself wasn't bigger than the data, you know, still the overhead of adding that table um, is probably going to make the compression like even not that much, or, or yeah, maybe even like negative compression, right? It's actually going to get bigger. Uh, right, however, well, for larger typical text uh, like documents, emails, web pages, then Huffman coding is usually going to half the number of bytes. And actually, in different languages, you know, you can see you, you'll actually get different compression amounts. Um, but yeah, this is just talking about kind of, well, I guess just the, yeah, sort of like English or, yeah, Latin characters. Um, yeah, of course, just the alphabet that you get on the keyboard. Um, right, so just as a test, well, I just generated, you know, 100 paragraphs of random words, uh, probably just using like lorem, uh, lorem ipsum. Um, right, the file size was 80 kilobytes, and then with compression, well, I compressed to about 40 kilobytes. Um, so yeah, I guess in this case, right, we did actually get the 50% compression ratio. Now for this, right, you can use it, well, again, right, either of these websites, um, yeah, just to have a go. Right, so let's look at three examples, and we want to think, well, which of these three can be compressed the most, right? All are going to be 26 characters. So I guess what, the first one, well, just the alphabet A to Z, right, well, then just 26 A's, 
uh, right then just what 26 emojis so right pause the video have a think which can be compressed the most um, yeah which can be compressed the least and some of these might actually be bigger right than if we just didn't use Huffman coding at all so if we look at the first one well the first one's actually going to okay so the original is just 26 bytes because well of course that's just you know regular ASCII uh, however with Huffman coding it's actually gone to 48 so we've got what approximately a double um, and yeah I guess you know try to think why it's actually doubled right then well let's have a look at the next one uh, right, okay so well the, yeah I, I guess uh, okay, okay so well of course right the next one's been pretty successful uh, right we've got a four times decrease right 26 to 6 right then if we look at the final one um, so I mean here we've got a decrease although I guess right not as much um, and yeah let, well let's think about why so right why did the emojis take up more bytes initially now hopefully people remember that of course well emojis um, since we can't represent them in ASCII and remember what standard ASCII is 7 bits right extended ASCII is 8 bits right then we had to use Unicode and what that can be well UTF-8 is going to use uh, well your 8 to 32 bits um, I guess we could also use you know UTF-16 right which is just going to be 16 bits uh, right then let's just think well why was you know this 26 repeated A's uh, able to be compressed the most and hopefully it's going to be you know fairly obvious with this um, I mean in this case right since we only had one character well then of course you know we can generate a really short Huffman code so rather than for example using 8 bits uh, if, if we actually go back right let's look at our example here um, okay, okay so yeah okay rather than using 8 bits what we saw in this example our shortest or yeah okay right let's say our most common character only used 2 bits so if we're thinking like probably the same here um, yeah of course you know that's why it can be compressed so much um, and then like I, I don't know like maybe in this case you know we can probably do it just using one bit to be honest um, all right so let's think then what would happen to the compression ratio if we had longer text right eg if we use the same set of 26 emojis but had a text with you know thousands of them instead so of course yeah rather than what just having like the butterfly one time you know we have the butterfly like a hundred times and we have yeah what the lion the monkey you know hundreds of times so if you think about that then hopefully you realize well right that that means the uh okay the compression ratio is going to improve and the reason for that is because well of, of course the actual size of the uh okay okay the size of the sort of hoffman table is going to stay the same but if, well of course right the amount of text is going to increase uh therefore the kind of proportion um yeah okay, okay right, maybe, well maybe that's a bad example uh let's just try and draw it visually now let's say here right if we've got uh, I know right okay let's say a small amount of text then a big amount of text now let's say in our small amount of text right let's say this first part uh, all right well let's say the table uh, and then right let's say this part is the actual text you know you what using the Huffman coding so in in this case of course what we see that the table takes up let's say 50 percent right of the of yeah of kind of the whole data now if we're talking more text well the thing is you know the table is still going to stay the same size um, but of, of course you know the text is actually uh, yeah okay what we say the text is actually a kind of higher proportion um therefore like if we think well of course right if this was the original you know well obviously yeah well the you know the original would have gone on and on um but of course yeah here we can kind of compress it more uh like i, I don't know like maybe that makes sense but it's, it's kind of just saying well because um yeah like of, of course well okay right because if we look at this first example right the table is a high proportion you know of the whole data right therefore or in, in some cases you know the actual size is going to increase uh, but uh, yeah uh, okay okay but like once we start adding more data well then we can actually kind of have a better compression ratio um yes yeah, since you know as a proportion right the actual table is taking up less data um yeah so we say what well, because we have longer longer text well basically we have more repeats so right more of the same character right therefore better compression um, and like what I've tried to say, what the initial overhead of storing the Huffman table is kind of overtaken by the amount of compression we get. Um, yeah, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, although to be honest, you know, in the exam they probably wouldn't mention that. I mean, I mean that would be a hard question, you know, if they were hinting at that kind of thing. Right. So let's suppose then we have two strings. Uh, I guess this one. Uh, so what kind of three A's, then three B's, right? and then here what just A B A B A B, right? Just alternating. So let's think, well, how would their compression ratio compare? And again, just pause the video, have a think. So in this case, right, it's actually going to be the same um, because, 
Well, of, 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 yeah, okay, of course, right, for text, we're not using run length encoding, right? We're using, well, half encoding. Now, if we were using run length encoding, well, of course, this one can be compressed more, whereas, of course, yeah, here we have, what, no consecutive repeats. But, I mean, since it's half encoding, I, I don't know, right, maybe let's say this is 0, 1 in half encoding, uh, and let's say, I don't know, you know, BB is like 1, 1. Right, well, that you know, then of course it's just going to be the same, right? Because well, this is going to be zero one, and then one one, right? Zero one, you know, one one, right, etc. Um, and yeah, what well, of course you know, in both cases they're both going to be twelve bits. Um, now, actually, like sometimes in the mark scheme they do actually accept run length encoding for text. So if you can't think of anything else for text, you know, you you probably can say run length encoding. Um, but yeah, I think in reality, like it's not really used that common to be honest. Um, yeah, okay, all right, I think, yeah, that's fine. Right then, well, I think finally then, if we just look, uh, if we look at Huffman coding for audio, so, well, we said that, yeah, of course, this can also be used for audio. And the reason is that, well, some amplitudes will appear repeatedly. So, of course, well, if we see in this diagram, uh, I guess we can see what sort of these two, uh, yeah, kind of, you know, this, well, this one and this one right there, the same. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know, uh, yeah, I don't know, okay, maybe this one here, right, that's also the same. Um, so of course, again, rather than storing the actual kind of absolute value, right, we're just going to store the Huffman code, um, yeah, instead. Right now, this extension task, I mean, I'm just going to leave it up here. Like, probably I'll upload this file, um, yeah, to the resources part of the website. Uh, people can have a go at this if they want. But yeah, this is kind of completely unrelated, you know, more about kind of hacking, to be honest. Um, although, of course, you know, this, what well, this is going to be, right, also thinking about hex, right, so thinking about ASCII as well. Uh, yeah, so if people want to have a go at that, right, they can. Right, now then, if we just look at an overview, I uh, have some questions. So we want to list, right, lossy and lossless compression methods for text, images, and audio. So if we think, well, for text, right, I mean, well, okay, there actually isn't any lossy compression because, well, generally, we don't want to lose any text, right? Well, otherwise, it's just going to be, uh, yeah, kind of un-understandable, right? It's, yeah. Uh, right, but then, well, if we think lossless, well, that's going to be Huffman coding. Right, then if we think about images, um, so, I mean, images, well, we just want to think about the formula. So the formula, what is going to be the resolution multiplied by the bit depth. So, of course, uh, well, okay, right, let's say if we reduce either of those, right, that's going to be lossy compression. Right, if we're talking about, well, lossless, okay, well, that's going to be run length encoding. Um, yeah, and I, I, I mean, to be honest, like, there, there are also other, you know, more advanced techniques. But I think for A level, you know, I think just knowing a couple should be fine. Right, then if we talk about audio, so what one, and right, okay, if we're talking about lossy, uh, well, of course, well, one is going to be what reducing the quiet sounds, right? Also reducing the, uh, okay, well, not reducing, uh, let's say removing the quiet sounds, right? Also removing the frequencies that are inaudible to, you know, sort of regular people. Um, yeah, what, 20, what, 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Um, well, we can also store, uh, rather than storing the absolute value, what we just store the offset from the average. So if we say, what, the average is 50, uh, of course, what we're just going to store the offset, I don't know, maybe this is like plus two, right, to represent 52. And then, for example, I don't know, like minus three, you know, to represent 47 decibels, for example. Um, yeah, and, and, well, and again, you know, for audio, of course, we just want to think about the formula. So the formula what, is going to be the uh, sampling rate, okay, multiplied by the sampling resolution, right, multiplied by the channels, right, multiplied by the duration. And of course, well, the duration we probably don't want to change, but yeah, the other three, right, of course, we can reduce. Now, as mentioned, you know, in the exam, generally the channels is one, so I suppose, yeah, usually you wouldn't be able to reduce the channels. Um, right, so just to say all of those again, I mean, yeah, it's, it's just going to be that. Um, well, I, I, yeah, and right, of course, uh, we're also Huffman coding, right, for audio as well. Um, right, then let's try to explain how run length encoding is going to work. So again, well, pause the video, I have a think. Uh, yeah, see if you can do it. So if we say what, I, I yeah, okay, I guess, uh, well, I mean, let's just see the answer, right, it's probably better than what I can say. So, right, it's going to be the number of consecutive pixels of the same color accounted. And rather than storing the repeated pixels redundantly, then data will be stored what in the form of count then color. So e.g. if we say what well, three and then what zero two five five zero, uh what well, that's gonna be green because well yeah, zero red, two five five green, right? Uh, zero, uh yeah, zero blue. Uh what well, then we have well four and what well, that's just gonna be red. Um and of course yeah, what to represent well three green, right? Then four red pixels. Then finally we just want to explain how Hoffman coding works, and again, right, pause the video, have a go. So, right, we can say something like this, uh, maybe a table mapping data to Hoffman codes. Uh, and of course, why, uh, yeah, I, I guess, right, if we're talking about text, right, the data is going to be characters. Um, of course, right, if we're talking about audio, what well, this, uh, this data is going to be the amplitudes. Right, so this table is created and sent with the data, right, the most common values are given the shortest Hoffman codes. 
and the codes are generated using Hoffman trees, right? So that there's only one possible decoding. Now, I mean, if, if you want to search this Hoffman trees, I mean, you can. Um, I think the way it works is, well, you're, you're going to have, uh, well, I, I, yeah, okay, okay, right. Well, I mean, let's say here it's just the root node. All right, then you're going to have, you know, a left branch, right? Let's say a right branch. Uh, I don't know, maybe something like CD. And I, I think the way it works is that, well, if you go left, okay, you say it's a zero, right? If you go right, you say it's a one. So, for example, well, B is just going to be one, okay? But then if we look at C, well, right, C, I mean, well, first we, uh, okay, yeah, sorry, okay, first we have to go right, okay, then we go left. Um, so what that's going to be, well, one, zero, right? Then if we look at D, uh, well, that's just going to be one, one. Now, in reality, of course, well, I mean, yeah, this is actually not going to work because, well, here we're going to have uh, multiple, uh, I, I guess, yeah, kind of multiple codes that, you know, uh, right, can be decoded to the same thing. Um, but, I mean, this is like the basic idea of how it works. Right? Obviously, it's going to be a little bit more sophisticated than this. But, yeah, that's just the general idea. Now, of course, I mean, well, th yeah, this idea, you know, you don't need to know for the exam, right? But, yeah, if people are curious, uh, I guess, yeah, they can search a video about how this works. All right, anyway, guys, so I think, yeah, for this video, well, that's all I wanted to cover. Um, as always, right, any questions, just ask in the comments. And I think next time I'm going to make a video just kind of uh, summarizing, you know, all of Unit 1. Since, to be honest, I mean, this is a huge chapter. And hopefully I'll be able to keep that video to maybe an hour or less. Um, yeah, all right, so if, well, if that's going to be good, then hopefully see you in the next video.